Uh, thanks very much. It's uh, absolutely fabulous to be here. Um, I've uh, had the great pleasure over a good number of years of teaching mathematics to Libyan students and also uh, supervising a few Libyan PhD students myself. And certainly still being in contact with many Libyan students that I've taught over the years, I have got a sense of real excitement over the last year or two about the potential that is hopefully, and I'm sure will happen in the not-too-distant future, and also of what efforts are being made back in Libya by some very dedicated people to turn the potential into reality. And I think most of the UK people here at this great event would be absolutely thrilled and very, very humbled to be part of that, and I'm sure we all speak that way. I was asked just to say a little bit about Keele University and also talk about what we're doing with Global Solutions. And our vision, if you like, is to set up some sort of centre where we could use that as a vehicle for putting together the consortiums that are going to be needed to provide the bespoke training and courses that's going to be needed to provide exactly what the Libyan economy and people need to move forward as a country in a modern world. Um, just to talk a little bit about um, Kiel, uh, it's one of the smaller universities in the country. Um, I usually end up having to explain where it is. It's halfway between Birmingham and Manchester. Uh, when I moved there, my mother got quite upset because she thought I was moving to Germany. Um, so. We have a great reputation for having a fabulous campus. We used to be able to say it was the biggest in Europe. Our campus has not got any smaller, but Europe's got bigger, so I don't know whether we can still say that, but a few years ago it was the biggest in Europe, but they had to change Europe rather than our campus to stop us saying that with sort of definitive uh, certainty that we were correct. Uh, we're very, very highly rated in national student surveys. The students generally that come to Kiel on our campus have a great time and they really do enjoy the facilities that we've got. The best way to appreciate what we've got at Kiel is to come and have a look for yourself and we would be delighted if any of you did come up to have a look at what we've got at Kiel. We're very highly rated in national student surveys and very highly rated for employability. Um, Research-wise, we do very, very well. Uh, I was very proud that my own mathematics research group was fifth in terms of percentage of world-leading research outputs at the last government assessment, and uh, very pleased that some of my friends at Oxford were one place below us. That was uh, a great source of pride for us all. Um, we were the first UK university after the um, Second World War to open, and we're actually on land that was essentially the garden of the Sneed family that used to mine coal in the region. And the only place locally where there is any coal is underneath the campus that the university is on. And we're now drilling to release the methane if possible and try to make the campus um, energy neutral so we can use the energy that's underneath to... And that's the, that's the aim that we've got. And we've got quite a big push on sustainability and uh, Dr Sharon George who runs our sustainability centre she'll be down later today and tomorrow and we'll be delighted to talk to anyone about that in particular. There was some interesting comments this morning about curriculum by one of the speakers saying how the Libyan curriculum has not changed for many many years and that's a source of uh, something that has to change quite quickly. And I think, in many ways, education is changing very drastically and very, very quickly. In many ways, it's, it's moving into a situation where the, the skills that people acquire through the learning process is becoming just as important, if not more so, 
than the actual subject content of what they learn in many ways. We're preparing people that need to not just get their first job when they leave university, but keep themselves employed for possibly 50 years in a very changing external environment. And so we developed a thing that Keel would call the distinctive curriculum that tries to develop these skills, working with industry, working with other external agencies, to try to give people the skills that they need to keep themselves employed and to make a contribution to, uh, to the world at large. And I think it's important that we appreciate that many people, when they leave university, we are, we're preparing them for jobs that have not yet been identified and able to use and develop technology that's not been invented. I think it's a very, very big ask these days, and I think that's what we've got to look at within universities because of the ever-changing external environment. One of the ideas that we've got with the, with the centre is to actually work with Libyan stakeholders, UK partners, to actually provide bespoke educational courses, training courses, exactly tailored to what's required and delivered in a way that is accessible in terms of when people can come, whether they can come in short blocks and do modules at a time, whether they can come and be there for the whole year. So I think the mode of delivery has got to be flexible and the courses have got to be tailored to the requirements that Libya needs to move forward. Just to finish by talking about a couple of products that we've talked about with uh, partners in Libya and two of the first things that we'll be rolling out. MBAs, we've picked project management because that, first of all, has been a very successful course for us at Kiel, but also because we believe that project management can permeate across lots of different subject disciplines. And so there's many, many subject areas where project management can form a particularly effective master's level course to complement undergraduate acquired knowledge in many, many other disciplines. One of the very successful parts of this course at Keele has been to replace the academic dissertation that normally goes with master's courses with what we call a student consulting project where students go into industry, work for a company, and try to bring in new business and bring money into that company. And we've had some very, very big successes. And it's a very spectacular day when we have all the students coming back to make presentations about what they've actually done for companies and how much money they've actually delivered on the bottom line of the companies that they work for. And I think that is a tremendous learning experience for the students to put them into a real world situation rather than just contrive something in a classroom. The other course is Environmental Sustainability and Green Technology, which is another course that we've uh, got at Keel that we're quickly converting and tweaking so that there's applications that are delivered that will be bespoke to uh, the Libyan need at the moment as we see it and as they're articulated to us by the partners that we're working with from Libya. Um, I'll just conclude by saying that uh, the previous speaker from York made comments about um, one of our former Prime Ministers, Tony Blair, making a comment that he thought was incorrect. Now, I absolutely agree that there wasn't very much that that particular gentleman said that was correct, but one thing Mr. Blair did say that was absolutely correct in my opinion is that for the economic and social benefits of a country, there's only three things that are important. The first is education. The second is education. And the third is education. Thank you.